Hello. We are here with uh, Jeff Nolan, and uh, we are now uh, talking about, uh, for a few minutes, uh, uh, with the relationship between uh, uh, Web2 and businesses. But before, I would like uh, Nolan to explain us what he's doing now. Well, I recently left the last company I was leading. I'm uh, now doing private investing in startup companies and acting in consulting, strategic consulting with a number of startups that, uh, that, uh, that you know, are interesting to me. So you did a great change in your life uh, in the last month. Change is constant. In Silicon Valley, things are always changing. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's normal. Okay, so you, you, do you like the change? Or do you think that changes uh, will bring benefits to, to life and businesses? What do you think between the relationship uh, of Web 2.0 and businesses? The change will help the businesses? I think so, and I think that this notion of Web 2.0 being something new is a little bit mistaken. What we're really doing is achieving um, or, or extending technologies that have you know, first appeared you know, 10 years ago. This is really about achieving the promise of the Internet as it was originally defined. And now what we're seeing are applications and companies, new companies, and new ways of interacting with other people that are a consequence of technology that's very inexpensive and very accessible. You and I don't have to pay a lot of money to get great applications today. Search technology brings us very much closer to content and new forms of, uh, new forms of applications. And again, it's something that's free or it's in being paid for by somebody else. So do you think that uh, uh, more and more people will have uh, the possibility to access to technologies and to connect uh, with each other? Yeah. In fact, I saw some, I read some statistics today about broadband penetration worldwide. One in five people are now estimated to have access to high-speed Internet. And what that means is that as more people not only become connected but have uh, constant connectivity, that the Internet, web-based computing, becomes, a, you know, becomes something that they just use in their daily life. And as a consequence of that, it brings people together. And um, I know that you define an effect as the uh, flattening effect. Would you like to explain us yeah. what well, it that's is? Really, that's a play on Thomas Friedman's book, The Flat Earth. And what Friedman did is he looked at manufacturing and talked about how products are made all over the world and you know, it just doesn't really matter anymore. What I see is the social dimension to that, and that uh, I'm at this conference in Milan, Italy, not because I you know, know either Reed Elsevier very well or the people organizing it, but because we were connected through an online social network. And it did not require me to be present. I did not have to be here in order to meet, meet these people. So I think that the, the most interesting aspect of all of these new technologies is the social aspect and how people can become connected to other people. And actually, connection is the main thing that they're doing, whether it be on MySpace or Facebook or Twitter or any of these really interesting new applications. It's really all about connecting with other people and sharing information. And uh, um, which kind of benefits uh, will businesses take from this connectivity? It's going to be cheaper, first of all. You know, they'll have more you know, the days of spending $100 million to implement a bunch of really expensive software packages is over. And smaller businesses will benefit from technology that was previously only available to large companies. And what that means is that they can do business more inexpensively, they can have greater reach, uh, expand in their markets without necessarily just hiring more people. So I have a last question for you. Um, what do you think about the third uh, world and uh, um, the fact that uh, they are uh, cut off this uh, uh, technology, um, how long it will take for them to, to be connected with uh, the Western world? Well, I think the definition of the third world is kind of interesting. I mean, I look at places in, like in India, for example, which was you know, not long ago considered developing and is now one of the hottest economies on the planet because of technology. Uh, I think that there are, there are structural problems in places like Africa, for example, that are only going to be overcome when there's a political will to overcome them. Technology doesn't solve problems. People solve problems. And in, in countries or regions where there has been both an, um, there, an investment of technology and a commitment to making those investments successful, like China, like India, like parts of South America, I think you know, it's the, the results speak for themselves.
So in terms of connecting the third world, it can only, you know, it can only result in good. People are cut off not because of, you know, not because of any failure of technology, but because of their, the failure of their leaders. The spread of democracy is what, what brings people success. Thank you very much, Thank Jeff. You. you gave a lot of interesting uh, uh, subjects and things to think about. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much.